welcome to today's episode of Touched by Faith, that one program that gives your testimony a voice. I am Olufunke Owo. Last week, we started a series on Mr. Ololo, the man who was miraculously healed of malignant melanoma, that is, cancer of the mouth. But before we go on with this testimony, I would like us to listen to the word of the Lord from our Father in the Lord, Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboye, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Stay tuned. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Welcome you especially to the Open Heavens International Center. I tell you that I had several encounters with God in that house. Let somebody shout the anointing in that house is uh, awesome. In Isaiah 45, verse 7, Isaiah 45, verse 7, the Almighty God said, I formed light. I created darkness. I make peace and created evil. Combine. I mean, just take a look at that statement. He said, I formed light. I created darkness. I formed peace and created evil. So light and peace go together. Darkness and evil walk hand in hand. There is a link between light and peace. Now, I've told you that peace can be in categories. There is peace. There is great peace. Psalm 119, verse 165. Psalm 119, verse 165. The word of God says, They that love thy law shall have great peace. Then there is all round peace. First King chapter 4, verse 24. First King chapter 4, verse 24. Says Solomon had peace all round. Then there is peace like a river. Isaiah 48, verse 18. Isaiah 48, verse 18. The Almighty God said, if only you obey me, then your peace will be like a river. But then I told you about the peace, the purest peace, and that is in the in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, Philippians 4, verse 7, the peace of God that passes all understanding, the kind of peace that you have, and people will wonder, how can you be at peace in such a situation? I've shared this testimony before. The first time I had a cruise, somebody, some of my children said, we want you to rest, and the best way to rest is get away from these people. Go on a cruise. And I'm telling you, I've said it before, if you really need a holiday, you want to really, really be on holiday, go on a cruise. 
they will feed you like nobody's business. They seem to take joy in overfeeding you. And since you are <laughs> far in the ocean, then nobody can come and visit. And the first six days of the cruise was like heaven on earth. Then the sixth day, a storm came. Ah, you don't want to be on the ocean when there is a storm. The ship we are in, I mean, several stories high. It's bigger than Sheraton Hotel. But when the storm came, the ocean would take this thing like a toy, toss it up several stories high, and then drop it. And everything was shaking right, left, and right. The cutleries, the plates were flying about. It was terrible. Things got so bad, the captain called all of us together and said, well, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry yourself. Uh, there are 12 categories of storms at sea. Uh, category 1 is the smallest, category 12 is the worst, and we are only in category 10. Ah! <laughs> hey, I said, oh God, what am I doing here? In my village, the biggest river, a, a strong man can jump over it. What am I doing here? Category 10? So he said, don't worry, just go to your cabin and stay there. Oh, God. I got to my cabin. I said, Lord God Almighty, what am I going to do now? And I heard him speak. And the Almighty God will speak to those of you in the storm right now. Yay. And said, son, when I was here on earth and there was a storm, what was it the Bible says I was doing? Uh, the Bible said you were sleeping. I said, son, sleep. Welcome back. I hope you have been blessed by that word of the Lord that has come to us through our Father in the Lord, Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboye. For more messages of Pastor Enoch Adejari Adeboye, kindly visit www.theredeemersnetwork.tv. Mr. Ololo started sharing with us his testimony last week. Today, we are still going to hear more from Mr. Ololo and then Mrs. Ololo, whose pain was emotional while her husband was suffering the physical pain. Today, she will be, she will be sharing with us her experience, her expectations, and then her testimony. Mind you, the pictures are graphical in nature. Viewer's discretion is advised. John 11 verse 4. John 11 verse 4. Ha! Ah, I say, Father, indeed you are God. Father, indeed you are God. I trusted him for that word there. And I believed him that of a truth, he's going to bring it to pass. May came, lockdown was tough. I managed to go to loot. Hey, we don't want to see you. In fact, it's a serious case. Ah, in fact, the, 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 uh, the, the infection was so bad that from where I stand, say two or four, five meters away, you can hear the stench out from my mouth. The odor was terribly bad. Doctors, when they want to talk to me, they stay far. They say, oh, stay there, and so on. So I stay back, and from there, I would either write for them to understand what I'm saying, because there's no way for me to talk, I can barely talk, and so on. May came, and Dr. Majiro Inapapa, who referred me to Lut, now said, okay, what I will do is this. I'm going to send you to Enugu. That was at the heat of the lockdown. I'm going to send you to Enugu, so that... You meet one of the best surgeons in the world, Professor Oji Oji Chima. He's one of the best surgeons, Max Official surgeon. He does the surgery of the face and so on. I took off that month of May, went to Enugu. I met him. 
He looked at me. He said, Mr. Lolo, this is a very bad one. It's not a good one. How come you allow this to get this bad? I laughed. I already known that, of course, that is the result I'm going to get. So how come do you allow this? He opened my eyes, opened my mouth, took picture of the growth. Then it was still very fair. He said, Mr. Lolo, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. He said to me, no hope. That it's only God that can do this. I could read the handwriting on the wall that he meant that. He said, there's no hope. That I should go back to Lagos. That all the reports that Lut gave, both the biopsies and the tests that did, that everything is sure correct. Right there, he called the referred, the person who referred me, the doctor, Dr. Majero, and said, I'm sending this guy back. There's no way. This guy isn't going to leave. I took all the way. I spent four days there. Came back. The same report to Ibadan, too. Um, Professor Clement Oko, he's also an oncologist, a pathologist in UCH Ibadan. He called six most senior professors over this case when he got the biopsy results. And they looked at it and they said they had never seen such a cancer of this nature before in their life. And that this man should go and write his will. That isn't going to leave. It was that bad. And he told my younger brother, who was to wait then during the lockdown, because they wanted to do it in such a way that at least. He said, Emmanuel Ololo, do your wedding on time. Try as much as possible to do it on time. Your brother isn't going to leave. Your other brother isn't going to leave. Let it be the last honor and the last respect you're going to give to him. And so on. And my younger brother heard it and he didn't... He was like so being and worried, say, this is the father we have now since we lost our father. And here, death has come again to take our elder brother, whom we want him to be there for us. He kept it all true. And so on. <sighs> it was so terrible. It was bad. It was worse. When we saw it, it was already looking bad. It was already out of. Or do I believe? Over the year, I've known God. There's nothing impossible with Him. So I knew God is in me. He knows why it's happening, and He's the only one that can bring us out of it. It was worse. Each day, it got bad. But you know one thing there. One thing there was this. In it, I kept praising God. In it, I kept thanking God. I would raise up, wake up in the morning, I say, Father, I thank you for this affliction. I glorify your name for this affliction. Oh Lord, I bless your name. You are wonderful. You are mighty than the mightiest. You are higher than the highest. You are God indeed. I thank you for this affliction. Every morning I do this. What I know how to do, which is prayer, praises, and faith, believing God. And also listening to what he says, his direction, what he wants us to do. If it's prayer or mercy or whatever, then we'll be able to see your strength. So, even my kids, we all went into prayer and fasting, dry fasting. We were praying every night. Sleep was off from our eyes. So we make sure every night we woke up to pray, to see it, sing praises. Ah. Ibadan gave their own report, dead. Abuja gave their own report, dead. Loot, dead. Majero, dead. Enugu, dead. When the report got to NSIA cancer unit in Loot, NSIA cancer unit, my consultant there is Dr. Alabi. She's a lady, an oncologist. She looked at me and said, So Lolo, this case is really bad. So bad. I said to her, It has to get bad. Too bad. Terribly bad. More worse for God to show himself. And she looked at me, What kind of faith does this guy have? I mean, what is this? I said, Man, that is the truth. It has to get bad. Extremely bad. For God to prove himself. God was revealed a whole lot of things 
in the dream. So here we are, by the special grace of God. Is it okay? No problem. How do you manage to eat? Sir, I barely eat. Because if I need to put something in my mouth so that I can get strength, because more often than most, I bleed three, four hours. I discover that it's so hard. I will manage to see how I can stuff a little food through the side of my mouth. And once I do that, I'll raise my head up like this. This is how I'll be turning my neck. So that, because the food had gone under my tongue, because the long bear has compressed my tongue. So the way I rotate my head is to see how my tongue can be able to pick the food and place it on the platform of my tongue, on the layer of my tongue, so I can swallow it. And that's how it doesn't end there. My head could just come down like this, and the next thing that will follow is blood. And that will take another two, three hours, and the whole place will be messed up. She said, Mr. Lolo, what I'll do for you is this. I will try as much as possible to extend your life. Hi! That touched me so bitterly. I looked at her. She didn't know why I was looking at her. In my heart, several things had run through my mind, my heart, and so on. So many things were coming to my mind, but I didn't want to. Because when you want God, when you're asking God for why this, why, where is this thing coming from? Why, why has it happened this way? You, you also have to be careful of your state of mind, knowing you are dealing with God. You have to be really open. I said, Lord, went back to my altar. I said, Father, if you are God, show yourself. A mother being you created, a mother being, is telling me she's going to extend my life. <laughs> what is your word saying in Isaiah 48 verse 11? Isaiah 42 verse 8. That you share your glory with no man. If she by one reason or for a second extends my life for a little pinch like this, she has taken your glory. She indeed has taken your glory. And if I go back to her and say, Ah, Dr. Labi, thank you very much. Know it that your glory is gone. No, I was always crying, asking God questions. But at the time, I believe it's in the place of prayer, sincerely asking God to take control. I was praying for mercy, mercy for the whole entire family. In fact, everything that was coming out from my mouth was mercy, God have mercy, whatever it is, just have mercy. And Lord said, for his sake, that he was going to heal me. And I don't forget also that the Jesus message, where he said that death has, does not have the final say. Neither does sickness have the final say. Neither does poverty have the final say. That before the lockdown is over, that God is going to show himself. Lo and behold, I head on to this. Each night, I put the phone, the recording, I listen to Daddy Gio's message often and often. That particular message I keep in, that death does not have the final say. And just someone listening to this, that you will not die. I head on to it. I believe God strongly. And all to the glory of God, God showed himself. Mm, he has always been a faithful God. Indeed, a faithful God. He had been showing up in my family over and over, over and over. Come June, my company has already written reports that this guy is not going to leave where I work. They said, no. What they were expecting was obituary. Right, because the news had gone far that he had cancer. The, the mindset is once you have cancer, <laughs> it's a death sentence for you. But I never saw it that way because... Nothing is too hard for God to do. Nothing indeed is too hard for God to do. I held on to his promises and I believed him so strongly that he's faithful, that he's able to do all things. God had been faithful. He has done it before. That was what I was. I was going back to all the things he has done in the past, reminding him how faithful he had been. 
we are human. Sometimes, as long as we don't de de deliberately walk away from God or do things that you wouldn't want, as long as whatever you do, you go back every day to check yourself. Where have Father? Where have I done wrong? Where have I missed it? You try to, as a Christian, live that Christian life to the full, to people you live around with, people you mix with, even in your family. Then you remind him of all that he have done for you. Thank him. It's, it's all about praising him, praises, thanking him for all the goodness, all his goodness over the years in our lives. Telling him that we believe he can do whatever it is. I know he's in charge. He knows what he's doing. And he, so we, we are happy that God answered our prayer. Come that June, it was a tough one. A real tough one. Because the more, the more the day progresses, the more I feel bad. The head can be so cold at times, very cold, too cold that it's as if maybe my head is stuck into uh, a deep freezer for as long as possible. And what I need at that moment is a hot water. I had to put my head down like this and they'll pour me hot water on my head. The next thing is a bony kick, the next thing to cool my body down and so on. And then I'll be wrapped up instantly because it was all over. I had tumors all over my body, tumors everywhere, with pains, severe pain. When I mean pain, severe pains. But in it, I kept praising God. I kept thanking God for it. Because in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18, it says, give thanks to God in all things, for this is his will concerning you. And I kept thanking him for that affliction. Trust in him that he's able to heal me, that he's able to take it away. Because I know everything that God has created has a name. Cancer is a name. And the Lord has told us that we should go and have what? Dominion. We are happy that God answered our prayer. But there are some people that he has promised once they open their mouth. He said, Before you speak, he has had. And so, yes, please, he has done. So, there are people that are so dear to God. He, he answers them when they call on him. And I'm, I'm happy that we are one of the people in God's hands. Wow, what an awesome God we serve. Our God is still in the business of doing wonders. All you need to do is be on the same page with him. If you have given your life to Christ during the course of our Father in the Lord's ministration, Kindly visit www.redeemersnetwork.tv, fill in the decision form, and you can be rest assured that our Father in the Lord will be praying for you. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms displayed on your screen right now. Till I come your way again, I am Olufunke Owo. Remain blessed. And let somebody shout hallelujah. Pastor E.A. Adebui, delivering the word with passion and power. Redeemers Network Television.